So um, in section 1, 2, and 1, 3, we're going to talk about um, the difference between and what a coterminal and a reference angle is. So let's talk about first a coterminal angle. Um, and some of you may have already recognized that, hmm, wait a minute, I can take an angle that I've sketched and I can describe it a couple different ways in terms of an angle measurement. That's exactly what a coterminal angle is. A coterminal angle is angles that have the same initial side and terminal side, but can be different um, measures. So there's an infinite number of coterminal angles for every single angle. So that's why we do something calling a making a generalization. And the generalization is basically a formula that you can use to calculate um, as many coterminal angles for a particular angle as needed. So in degrees, for example, to state the generalization, you'd have an angle in degrees, and it's going to be whatever the angle measure you're trying to find the coterminal angle is, plus 360 degrees times k. And again, k represents any integer. And again, um, you, this again applies if your theta value is between 0 degrees and 360 degrees. So when I say any integer, you could say 1, 2, 3, or negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. All right? In radians, it'd be theta plus your 2 pi k. And again, um, this is again when you're looking at, again, k can be your any integer. And again, you're looking at an angle measurement that's between uh, 0 and 2 pi. So we take a look at um, coterminal angles. For example, let's suppose that I have an angle measurement of 100 degrees. So let's suppose that theta is equal to 100 degrees. So one coterminal angle that I could state for 100 degrees would be if I make one complete revolution of 360 degrees and then go around another 100 degrees. So a coterminal angle then for 100 degrees would be um, 360 plus 100, which would be 460 degrees. So that's an example of one coterminal angle for 100 degrees. Another one, I could also state a negative angle measurement. So for example, if I was to rotate in the clockwise direction, so again, um, if I went 180 degrees, and then I went another 80 degrees, I would have a negative um, three six, negative, what did I just say? Negative 180 up to here. And then again, I went um, another 80 degrees. That's going to be negative 260 degrees. So that would be another coterminal angle for um, my angle measurement of 100 degrees. So let's take a look at some examples. Find and draw one positive and one negative coterminal angle, and then they want me to make a generalization. So let me go ahead and sketch my angle 70 degrees. Again, 70 degrees is located right here in quadrant one. So really, to find a positive and negative coterminal angle, what you're simply going to do is you're going to add 360 and subtract 360. You may have to do this more than once, but again, if you're in radians, you would add or subtract 2 pi if your angle measurement is in radians. So for 70 degrees, my positive coterminal angle can be found by taking 70 degrees and adding 360 degrees to it. So 70 degrees plus 360 degrees is going to give me 430 degrees. So then my negative coterminal angle I would just simply take 70 degrees minus 360 degrees. And 70 degrees minus 360 degrees is negative 290 degrees. And then my generalization, and again, this would be the formula to calculate all coterminal angles, would be theta sub n is equal to my original angle of 70 degrees plus 360 degrees times k. So that's my generalization to calculate. Um, so if I plug in a 2, that would give, for K, that would give me another coterminal angle. If I plug in 3, 4, 5, etc. So in my diagram, my positive coterminal angle is shown by rotating around one revolution and then another 70 degrees. So there's my positive coterminal angle. My negative coterminal angle 
is found by rotating that terminal side in the clockwise direction. So there's your examples of your coterminal angles for 300 and for 70 degrees. Negative 5 pi over 3. So negative 5 pi over 3, um, again, my terminal side is going to be over here in quadrant 4. And again, I'm rotating around in this clockwise rotation. So there's my sketch for negative 5 pi over 3. So to find my positive coterminal angle, what I'm going to do is that, again, because I'm in radians, I'm going to add and subtract 2 pi. So negative 5 pi over 3 plus, now remember, 2 pi with a common denominator of 3 is equivalent to 6 pi over 3. So I'm going to take negative 5 pi over 3 and add 6 pi over 3. So that gives me pi over 3. So there's my one positive coterminal angle. My negative coterminal angle is going to be found by taking negative 5 pi over 3 and subtracting 6 pi over 3, which is negative 11 pi over 3. So there's my negative coterminal angle. So then my generalization is going to be found by taking theta sub n is equal to my negative 5 pi over 3 plus 2 pi k. So again, that's the formula I can use to calculate um, all of my coterminal angles. So um, again, when you take a look at your coterminal angles, again, pi over 3 is this angle right here. My negative coterminal angle is found by taking one revolution and then going around another negative 5 pi over 3. So there's my negative 11 pi over 3. Now with your generalization, typically this angle right here, we want to be in the generalization a positive angle between 0 and 2 pi. So a better way to express this particular generalization is to look at this pi over 3 positive coterminal angle. So to write my generalization would be pi over 3 plus my 2 pi k. Okay. So that's how we can find the um, coterminal angles for radians. So for negative 190 degrees, again, I know that my terminal side is up here in quadrant 2. So there's the sketch for negative 190 degrees. So my positive coterminal angle is going to be negative 190 degrees plus 360 degrees. So negative 190 plus 360 is going to give me 170 degrees. My negative coterminal angle is going to be found by taking negative 190 degrees and subtracting 360 from it. So negative 190 minus 360 is going to give me negative 550. So again, um, for my generalization, again, we want this angle to be between 0 and 360. So look at this positive coterminal angle. So my generalization is going to be 170 degrees plus 360 degrees times k. So in my sketch, my positive coterminal angle is going to be, again, in that counterclockwise direction. There's 170 degrees. The negative 550, I'm going to have to make one complete revolution around and then go another negative 190 degrees. So there's my negative coterminal angle. So that's, again, a coterminal angle is an angle that has the same initial and terminal side, but have a different angle measurement to describe the same angle. Now, again, 3.89. 3.89 is um, not a degree measurement, but this is a radian measure. It's just they've multiplied out the pi. So again, you still find your positive coterminal angles in exactly the same way. Um, again, you're still going to add and subtract 2 pi. So my positive coterminal angle, except instead of pi, you'll want to use your calculator and multiply out the pi. I'm going to take 3.89, and I'm going to add 2 pi to it. But again, I'm going to estimate pi as a decimal. So again, on my calculator, I'll take my 3.89, and I'm going to add to it 2 pi. So that gives me 10.173.
my negative coterminal angle, I'm going to take 3.89 and I'm going to subtract 2 pi. And that gives me negative, negative 2.393. My generalization, 3.89 is already a radian angle measurement between 0 and 2 pi. So again, I'm just going to take my 3.89 and I'm going to add 2 pi k to it. So again, when I sketch 3.89, remember when we set up the quadrantals, Pi over 2 is about 1.571. I know pi is about 3.14. When I label my quadrantals, 3 pi divided by 2 is 4.712. So I know then that 3.89 is going to have the terminal side somewhere down here in quadrant 3 because 3.89 is between 3.14 and 4.712. So here's my initial side. Here's my terminal side. So there's my angle of 3.89. So then my positive coterminal angle, I know I'm going to make one revolution around and then go another 3.89 radians. So there's that positive coterminal angle. My negative coterminal angle, again, is going to go in that clockwise direction. So that is how we can find reference angles.